BigLloyd.com. Let's take a look at uh, PT GUI and how to do a panorama. Um, I recently learned how to use uh, PT GUI myself, and there are some points which I found confusing, and so I thought I'd share what um, I learned and maybe save you some time. Uh, first thing to do is you're going to grab your files, which you've already processed. I discussed those in other videos. I've got 1,700 megapixel files here. Now drag them into PT GUI. Drop them in place. And you'll see it's you see it's found found them all, and you can scroll and see them. First thing you do is if it doesn't do it automatically, is align images. Okay, and that's our initial take on things. And it looks curved. Don't worry. We're gonna don't worry about all this. We're gonna make this right. Um, uh, first thing I want to mention though, because I ran into this, is that uh, if you go to the right side, you'll get this little arrow guy. It says blending. Now, I just yanked it to one to one, thinking, well, higher precision is better. Well, the problem is if you try to do certain dragging operations, it can literally take like two minutes to render the image, and you won't drag at all. So for our purposes here, I've set it to one slash eight, which will give very good results, but I think it is a little better at one, one slash four, or two slash, uh, one slash two, or even one slash one. And I use zero overlap and so on. So uh, that's that. Now, it's curved here, so what's the first question I had, well, how do I straighten this thing out? Um, and the answer is, uh, you, you make sure you're set up here in the left-hand corner to the Edit Panorama Mode in the Panorama Editor. And I'm going to click, hold, and pull up. And you'll see that things are straightening out. I'm watching the bottom here. I want that about straight on the bottom. Let go, and you notice it's chopped the top off. I don't like that. So I'm going to go to the slider way over on the left here and um, just figure out which direction to go until it gives you some, renders you a screen that gives you all the sky you want. And uh, now we've got things more in range. And I'm going to grab this bottom uh, yellow line here. That's our kind of our crop and alignment mark. You can see things are a little bit off left is up over versus right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click now and drag and that will let me sort of level it uh, as opposed to stretching it like i just did so i'm watching the right versus the left and i'm not worried about getting exactly right here because it's not going to line up exactly well maybe i need to pull that guy up a little bit um, just takes a little fiddling and then take this crop line here and move it up a little higher uh, and I always just leave a little extra space there because uh, you, you can crop the remainder off when you're done anyway okay so that's the bottom and then on the top similarly let's pull a crop line down I can fill in some of that sky so I don't necessarily need to crop it off too low so I'm, I'm, I may just leave it more or less up here without that middle section so I got a patch here and a patch there I can fill in later so now we've got the top and the bottom I'm gonna crop it off on the side over here at a point where there we're losing image detail maybe not all of it just off the bat I'll leave a little extra and that's our basic setup for our panorama it's been kind of leveled out here I see there's a little gap on the bottom so I'm just gonna grab that again and just drag it down a little bit there we go okay so uh, that's our basic setup for this panorama now one trick uh, if you're on a Mac at least if you hit command tilde It'll switch you between windows, so I'm just hitting Command Tilde here. When I go back to here, I want to say to the Create Panorama window. Um, this that will actually do a render at this point. Um, I might or may not want to do that right now. Give me a second here. I'll show you something else. You notice there's um, some little icons here. Show seams. It'll show you all the seams involved. Sometimes it's actually worth just removing a frame from the panorama. Uh, in this case, we don't need to do it. The type of projection. Typically, cylindrical is excellent. Sometimes equi uh, rectangular is good. Well, when you change this, of course, your cropping and so on is going to change. So I'm just going to go back to cylindrical for now. I've been pretty happy with that. And uh, the other things, you, you can you can do all sorts of things here, but I'm not going to go over uh, most of that stuff in this video. That's for something else. Um, okay, so back to the, um, the project window here. And one of the things I like to do is go into this optimizer thing. And say uh, run, uh, run optimizer. It's very fast. It also tells me my control point distance. So these numbers are 
excellent. The average distance is 1.15. Anything under 4 is considered very good. So I've got one that's 4.9. I could go delete that maybe, but I'm not going to do it here. So this is really excellent. So I'm going to say OK. And then uh, there's not really a whole lot else you have to pay attention to most of the time. The lens settings, it's very smart about. It'll take, it'll set a default that's good. Cropping, we've, uh, we're not going to crop or integrate or image or mask them in this thing. Um, so it, we're basically ready to go. Um, there's all kinds of stuff in here you can mostly ignore. Um, and uh, just go back to create panorama. And uh, one last setting here is the interpolator has a real effect on how sharp it looks. So I've tried a bunch of these. And most of them, a lot of them like spline and bilinear, I, I wouldn't use these. They, they tend to make it look pretty soft, almost like it's a pixel and a half versus a pixel. And I just decided that the Lank, I don't know how you say this, Lank, Lank, Lanxos or Lankos, uh, there's 16, that's the, um, just pick that one. Any of them does a good job. You, you uh, get a nice sharp looking image. And output color space is just, I set it to the input. And by the way, you, you can use JPEGs for this, but I, I prefer to use TIFFs. I'm going to go to this much bother. Anyway, it's all set up, and at this point, all I have to do is say Create Panorama, or I can save it and send it to the Batch Stitcher and go pre pre prepare another uh, job. But in this case, I'm just going to say Create Panorama, Panorama, and it's going to chug along. And with the blending setting of 1 slash 8, it's going to generate about a 480 megapixel panorama here. As you can see, it's going quite fast on my uh, Apple Mac Pro M2 Ultra. That's 24-core machine with 192 gigabytes. That's um, um, I consider that very, very good. That speed we just saw. It's now done. If we go back into the uh, Finder, we'll see that there's a another panorama. I already generated one. This number one here um, is is there. I've already got it open. Let's take a look at it. Um, that That's the panorama. Um, I, gener I generated this one earlier. Just want to take time to open it. You can see it's got some stuff at the corners. Now you can just crop this off or you can go in there and you can, uh, for example, you can just do uh, content to wear fill. Um, oops, uh, just select select that guy and say edit um, content to wear fill. And uh, just sample it. Isn't Photoshop anyway? Uh, Photoshop's acting stupid on me. Just fill content aware. There you go. That's cute. And very nice Photoshop. Uh, I think I got don't have the layer selected or something. Anyway, you can go in there and fill these um, these little niggles in, or you can just you could crop them off. In this case, I don't I don't really want to crop that low because that doesn't give me a lot of sky. So I'm going to definitely fill that in. Um, let's see. Let me set my window to. Um, there you go. Um, this panorama here. Um, I don't know why Photoshop is acting up on me. That's pretty annoying. I'm going to demo. Edit. Fill. Content aware. Okay. Cute. Well, I don't know what his problem is. Uh, Photoshop's misbehaving. Anyway, that's the finished panorama. And what you should do when you're done, as I talk about in other videos, you go into here and you start looking around. and. I'm so happy with PT GUI because when I scan this horizon up here, I don't see any bad joints. I don't see any any problems at all. I mean, it's very impressive how good a job it's done. And um, furthermore, especially on the foreground where I found Photoshop Panorama Assembly, often gave me this weird, like blurred crap next to crap uh, that you can't couldn't figure out. Um, PT GUI generally doesn't do that. Um, this right here though may be a defect so it's a case in fact yeah it is a defect so actually i found something you may want to go in and adjust control points and regenerate it to, to fix this weirdness here and uh so you want to look scan the image for that type of thing you know generally we're looking pretty good here and um it, you know it's a big image so might you i would suggest you kind of just go left to right across the whole thing don't just randomly go i'm, I'm going pretty randomly here but um all in all, I think the uh, assembly that we got out of this is just fantastic. The sharp and the sharpness is good even after assembly. So, looking real good. And uh, that's PT GUI, and that's kind of how I've learned to use it so far. 
you can get into some much more complicated things. Uh, for example, the, that um, the, when we show these uh, seams, they're called, the one I had some trouble with there, I think was down, uh, down somewhere in this area. Uh, so that's a place you could look at to see what's going on with that weird join problem and uh, do something about it. All right, that's your intro. Hopefully it'll save you some time. Just those settings are kind of what you need to know and you will have outstandingly good results. As one postscript, do not use a polarizer when shooting a panel. I forgot to take it off. You can see that the uh, sky is light blue here to extremely dark blue over here. That's the darn polarizer. Uh, I wanted it for other reasons, but it, not a great effect here.